So, we are back again with another exciting episode, podcast episode, futuristic podcast episode of Shoot the Five. Myself, with the co-host, my man, Pat DeMoss. We have Mrs. Shelly Shalito visits uh, Shelly Shalito's way. You know, I'm just excited. We have a lot to discuss. There's a lot going on within the, within the world of mixed martial arts and combat sports. I, I would like to ask you this question. I want to I know your thoughts on, and pardon me if, you know, my voice sounds a little snobby because <laughs> my, my sinuses are acting up, you know, like, mm. <laughs> um, I, I, I would like you to get your thoughts on the upcoming, the, the recent announcement of McGregor's re, uh, return, as well as okay. Nate Diaz. Yes, this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. Um, oh, so yes. McGregor is returning to the Octagon October 6th, I believe, 6th or 9th, for UFC 229. He's taking on the current lightweight champion, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Uh, McGregor obviously hasn't competed since his boxing bout with Floyd Mather, which he lost by 10th round TKO. Um, it's exciting for the sport because uh, no matter your thoughts on McGregor, in my opinion, he is one of the most talented individuals I've ever seen compete in MMA. Um, and I mean, you've got to think, I mean, his boxing is going to be insane. I just, I mean, he, think about it, he just spent however long it was completely focusing on his boxing skills, and his hands were already deadly. So I can't wait to see how it's going to transition back into the cage. And this is a good fight because it's really just a wrestler versus striker matchup. You know, it's a good classic clash. And you have Khabib fans saying he's just going to take Conor down, wear him out, and just destroy him on the ground. And then, you know, you have McGregor fans saying McGregor's going to catch him in the first round of the feet and just put him to sleep. Um, it's an interesting matchup. And, you know, I'm sure we will release an article on it for Brooklyn Fights. Definitely, when that fight gets closer, we'll do a full breakdown analysis of it. Um, but my early thoughts on that fight, uh, to be honest, I really think McGregor is going to pull away with a knockout. And the reason I think that is because Khabib hasn't, besides Edson Barbosa, Khabib hasn't fought, like, not too many terribly good strikers. Uh, he fought RDA. Um, but, I mean, no, no real big... Um, names in the striking department for Khabib's record, in my opinion. It's a little bit padded. He is 26-0. Uh, but, you know, that's not necessarily his fault. You know, a lot of guys to pull out when they uh, match up with Khabib. But I just think McGregor's hands are going to be too much. You know, every round starts in the feet. So if it goes five rounds, McGregor has five of your chances of putting him to sleep with the left hand. So that's what I think about that fight. What do you think about that fight? I actually think it's going to be a phenomenal fight. And, and to piggyback on what you just mentioned, you know, he definitely, you know, he, he went a good 10 rounds with one of the best, if not the best boxer in the history of the sport, Floyd Mayweather. Um, I don't know whether or not he will be able to defeat his opponent in, in a fashion that he would like to defeat his opponent. I think it's going to be a tough fight. Um, I think both men will probably come in, you know, a little apprehensive, trying to figure out each other, trying to, you know, figure out the distance. Uh, we got to also look at the fact that, you know, Connor hasn't been in the cage, not in the ring, but in the cage. Excuse me, my voice is, like I said, I'm sick. Sniff, sniff. It's all good. <laughs> I think... Yeah, you know, I think Connor hasn't been in a ring. I mean, in the cage for quite some time. And although he is very skilled, and very talented, very entertaining, you know, to return back to the to the top of the top of the sport, that's where your greatness defines on who you actually are, who you truly are. And one thing about Floyd Mayweather, because we always have to include Floyd Mayweather because he did fight Floyd. We have to include the fact that you know. Floyd has been to the top of the top and excelled. Now the question lies on, can Conor do that? Can Conor truly, he's already been the face of UFC. He's already been the face of MMA. He is the face of MMA, mixed martial arts and UFC and all that included. Can Conor truly become that, that, that guy that transcends the sport to another era, to another generation? Welcome, everyone. We have... Mrs. Shelley Shalito 
This is, let me introduce you to everybody that's on the line. It's myself, uh, Xavier Porter, and uh, co-host Pat DeBoss. Hey, how you doing? Pat, you can say hi. Pat, don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Shelly Shalito, uh Vincent on the phone right now. Um, I appreciate you calling in. She's just announced a upcoming rematch fight against Heather the Heat Hardy for the WBO featherweight championship title championship um, taking place at the Hula Theater at Madison Square Garden. Uh, Shelly, what, what day is that fight taking place in? Um, 10-27, so uh, October 27th. It's taking place on October 27th, so make sure you, uh, you know, stay tuned, locked in to her Instagram, her Facebook, everything that's going on regarding that fight. Uh, she's fighting on the undercard of, excuse me, Shelly, my, uh, my nose is stuffed up. I've been sick all week, so but I appreciate you calling in. Uh, her fight is taking place on the undercard of Daniel Jacobs against Sergey Derevinjako for the vacant IBF uh, middleweight championship, but excluded that. Thank you, Shelly, for calling in. Nah, thank you for having me, man. So what's been going on? Like, hey, hey first of all, I want my hat back, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here stealing people's stuff. I ain't even know. Oh, man, that's crazy. I still, I still can't believe that. Every time I look at it, I just start laughing. I'll be like, damn, I'm going to see For all those that... Yeah. I go to the gym, I steal all the equipment and put it in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> and he talks to For all those like, that... I'm like, I, I'm, I'm yeah. like following with family. I thought the hat was Cassius's because it's a heavyweight and he put yeah. it I, I said, let me grab my boy's hat. I probably didn't have to my hat. He's like, hey, my hat, bro. You you I was like, dude, did I see you with, like, the same exact hat? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, for all the – let me – let me, let me, let me facts. For all those that don't know that are listening, you know, we uh, – I, I had I bought a hat from uh, my guy from Boxer Aficionado, and um, I, I left the hat. I was covering an event in, in Connecticut, the Willie Pepper event, and I left my hat, and I thought I left it in the bathroom. I ended up leaving on the table, and, and – and, you know, somebody said it belonged to Shelly, and Shelly was like, well, I'm taking it with me there. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and ever since then, me and Shelly just been locked in. We've been talking and everything, you know, and, it, and it's been a pleasure to, you know, network with you and contact, you know, speak with you and everything. But let's get to this fight. You know, let's get to this 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 huge announcement. Let everybody know exactly what's going on with this. All right. Okay, Shelly, go ahead. Take over. All right, so, you know, it- Everybody, everybody that's been following it and, like, the women's boxing, I've, I've been calling out Heather for a long time. And when I wanted to fight her and, and everything, that, that it, it wasn't happening. They, they, they didn't want the fight to happen. I was with a different promoter. She was always with Lou. And, you know, we finally got the fight. I mean, it's a, me and Heather hated each other, hated each other. It, I, I, it's not so much <laughs> the same hate anymore, you know. But, you know, I still yeah. believe in everything that I said, and, and I believe that's why she got brought up the way she did and everything. But... I also realized that, like, me and her have a lot in common. So the hate's not as thick, but the rivalry's still there. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm fucking her up. That's, like, the bottom line. It doesn't matter what's what. And I feel like I, I won the, the first fight. I feel like the, the scorecards was insane off. But, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, they're saying, oh, it's a close fight. It's a close fight. This fight could go either way. And then the score says that it was, like, a blowout. Like, that don't even make sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the scores is mad controversial. I thought I wanted six to four, and I've been trying to get that rematch, and I was promised an immediate rematch, and then she, she went over to MMA. So I went over there and was like, yo, it's good. Why are you, why are you like, dipping in and hiding over here? So I've got to weigh in, and um, I'm just excited that it's happening. This is, like, the best time, actually, for it to happen. It's on a great card. It's on a huge card. And I can't wait to, wait to give another amazing ten rounds because both of us, put it in, and, and you know what I'm saying, we got fight of the year that year, and, and we both put in a lot of work, we both work hard, and it's going to be another amazing fight, you know what I'm saying, non-stop, pressure punching, so, and, and, and this time, I'm not leaving without my property, that plain, that simple, if I have to borderline kill her in there, that's fine, if I have to borderline die, that's fine, but I'm not leaving without my stuff. So let me ask you this, well, how's the relationship it. with, with <laughs> Heather now? How is my girlfriend? Is no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 no, I'm <playing. laughs> Not, um, 
you know, I, I mean, there is not really a, no relationship. It's just that I don't really, I don't feel the same as I did before. Before I hated her. I hated everything about her. I hated, like, I hated, I hated her name. I hated it. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I, I thought that she was everything that was wrong with, with women's boxing. I, it, it's not the same. I mean, I still feel the same way of all the stuff that I said. And I'm sure when I get in there, we're both going to hate each other at that moment. But it's just, it's just, it's not in my heart the same way. I mean, I still dislike certain things. But after I, uh, uh, certain articles came out about her and stuff, I kind of looked at her different. I think that she did some research on me and, and realized that I'm not an asshole. And I didn't, never came at her daughter and all that stuff. Like what we said, a lot of, a lot of stuff was off. But, um, you know, I, 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 I realized that she, outside of boxing, that we're so similar in a lot of ways, like with the sexual abuse and the um, the abuse period, you know? So that kind of means, yeah. you know, uh, boxing-wise, I still feel the same, everything I said, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I feel that, you know what I'm saying? But I, I look at her as a, as, a, as a person a little bit different because I, I understand everything that, that she went through. You and you that. talked about you were um, granted an immediate or promised an immediate rematch after the first fight. Was it yep. was it just was it just because she wins MMA that that kind of fell through and you continued no, on with no. boxing? No, we, we was okay. we was slated we was slated to um, have a rematch in April, and I was like, yeah, let's go. And then she she said no, and then whatever from there, and then, you know what I'm saying, it kept, oh, yeah, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it just kept getting pushed off, pushed off, and then she was over there in the MMA and everything. But, uh, yeah, no, we were... This is why you jumped out the window. Oh, uh, yeah. This you is why, yeah, which so is why, like, you know... I'm like, damn, <laughs> she's over there wrestling with women, but I'm gay. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know what I'm saying? And then everybody's like, oh, would you fight her? Would you fight her in a, in a ring? First of all, I'm not going to disrespect their sport like that. You know, that's, 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 I, I would never rush into something like that or, or do something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I respect my sport, and I want to build my sport. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, hats off to her because she did what most of us want to do. Amanda Serrano is doing what most of us want to do. Like, I know that's out of my element. Yeah. Now, if the price is right, I would maybe do one with a, with a one certain. Oh, person. damn. <laughs> Money took. I'm going to get my face all up and my arms broken. But <laughs> I, that's another thing, too, is, like, MMA, I feel like I would have too much pride for that. Like, they would really have to break my arm, and that would mess up, like, most of my, the rest of my life because I just don't think that I would tap if I was hurt because I have too much pride yeah. for that. And, 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 and that's bad. That's bad for that sport. That's not a sport that you want to have that with. So it's, fair, so it's fair to say that, you know, you have – like you just mentioned, you have the ultimate respect, like you said, for, for Amanda Serrano as well as Heather for transcending into the sport of MMA to, to, to continue fighting and everything. Yeah. I mean, and, and the, the, the work that has to go into the MMA, you got to learn this move yeah. to do this move, and it's actually five different moves that you have to complete just to make the one move. You know what I'm saying? Like Brennan Ward, yeah. uh, Bellator, that, that's his father was one of my first trainers. Um, when I was going through all this stuff and got me into the boxing and I was channeling, I never got into it to fight. I was trying to channel my depression and anger. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I watched all the work that Brennan put in since a, since a kid, you know what I'm saying? And, and that, that it's hard. Yes. It's hard, man. Now, so uh, can you speak on, I'm sorry, yeah, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you may already know that. Cause, that, cause I, but, I, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just curious real quick though, Shelly. So, when Heather was on last week on our podcast, she talked about how she felt about uh, women's boxing and how it's marketed. And one of the reasons that she left the sport or put it on hiatus, however, rather was because of how it's promoted. Well, she ain't put it on hiatus because like she get ready to fight uh, Chilito. <laughs> well, she put it on hiatus to go to MMA. Uh, but, yeah. you know, like she said, the, the, the money the money was a situation for it. And then also, again, like I said, the recognition she got. How do you feel women's boxing – as a whole, and for yourself, is marketed? Um, marketed now, like, a lot better. Yeah. When we was first okay. starting out, it was it was terrible. It was, you know what I'm saying? We were promoting ourselves, right? especially, like, 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 I know with Heather, the same thing with me and her. We, we, we sell a lot of tickets, and we, we have to run around from state to state in our car, messing up our cars and stuff and all that stuff, and then we, we're making our own our own posters. I mean, the, the promotional company helps a little bit, but back in that time, I don't know where her and Lou, but what I was going through was it, it seemed like I was promoting myself a lot. And 
a lot of people wouldn't give us give us chances. We we never had the TV, and you know, it, it was it was it was a waste of time. Like either you loved it or, or it was a waste of time. But things is definitely changing now, and. You know, I would tell a little girl now, like, yeah, follow your dream, trace it. Before, I'd be like, don't waste your time, sweetheart. You're going to get your heart broke. You're not going to make no money. You're going to be broke. You're going to be poor. You can't take care of your family. But things are changing. I mean, Katie's making money. Clarissa's making money. Um, You know, that there's money. Katie there. Tilly, you mean, right? But the, the paydays are getting higher. You know what I'm saying? And then the opportunities are getting bigger. So it, it's definitely improving, but it, it, it's shit. We definitely took some strides because it wasn't like that before. Nobody would give us a chance. And then Lou, Lou gave us a chance. My promoter signed me from back then, Jimmy Burstrail. He gave me a chance, and I went over there to Lou, and Lou, get, Lou, Lou got us the platform for the television and all that. And the television is what, 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 what made it all different, you know? I agree. Okay. Y'all there? I think I'll... Um... I mean, and yeah, it's just, if you think about it, it's just going to keep getting better because look at the talent pool now. All the Olympians are, are turning pro. Um, you know, amazing, amazing talent. You know what I'm saying? There's so many girls out there, and people are seeing this now. They need to do, like, a female contender. I'm telling you. That's what they need to do, a female contender or or something like that, the, 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 the tournaments that they do with the guys and really get them, them girls. With the, you know what I'm saying? Because there's so much talent now. Yeah, so I think a lot of those. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my bad, my bad, you go. Actually, you go. No, you go first this time. <laughs> I'm just so I'm just so intrigued as as to you know, Shelly's fire and, and, and the desire for the rematch. Um, what did you take for the first fight? What did I what? What did you take for the first fight? Like what? As to, you know, fighting Heather, what, like, what did you think for the first fight? The alert is, you know, for what you learned for the first fight. I mean, we only had three weeks to get ready. Um, I had plane tickets to go to Bolivia with Jen for, for therapy for our, our sexual abuses. So that kind of threw, threw me off and everything. And, um, you know, it was, it was short notice, not, not a lot of time to get ready, and all my spawn partners were short, you know, like short, like short like me. That's what we had, and uh, you know, I, I just she came forward. She she was a better fighter than from when I was calling her out, and you know, this time I know I know that she's gonna run. She's not gonna pressure me, so I, I gotta cut the ring. And you know that there's certain things that I that I know I gotta work on from being in there now. You know what I'm saying? And uh, but I, like I said, and you know, I had people from Gleason's gym tell me this. I had famous people tell me this, actors, and uh, you know, I thought people thought I won that fight. I know that, you know what I'm saying, all oh, the scores that this and that, but you know how that goes. And you know what I'm saying? I know y'all can't give your yes. opinion, cause, but but I, I feel in my heart I won that fight. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to be me and do me and just do it a little bit more this time. Now, for the first fight, in my opinion, I can give my opinion. I felt like it was a, a really great fight. I was there live, direct, the Coney Island Amphitheater. I felt like it was a draw. I felt like both of y'all came forward. Because it was in New York. I agree. I would have took that. Now the fight is again back in New York City. It's not in Brooklyn now. It's in the uh, Madison Square Garden at the Hula Theater. Are you expecting the same type of? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that my manager gets it so that it's a neutral everything at least. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was told. I was told that if I went there, then it would come back here, which, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. As long as everything's neutral or, or, or no New York anything for our fight. Like, get get, get me get, get a smoger. I like smoger, like, for the ref. And then, you know what I'm saying, neutral judges. No New York judges. No 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 nothing like that. Just nice and neutral. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that would make me comfortable. And let me tell you about the whole Madison Square Garden thing. Like, when I was little, I played basketball. I was okay, but I loved basketball. I wanted to be a professional basketball player, <laughs> right? So, okay. Like, all the time I, when I was a kid, I'm like, Grandpa, I just want to shoot some hoops at Madison Square Garden. Like, that's my dream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play at Madison Square You know what I'm saying? So now I get to do what I love and what I'm good at in a place that I already had, you know what I'm saying, dreams for. Like, like that's amazing. I'm going to get a belt. I'm taking that shit home. 
I'm going to beat this girl again, in my opinion. And you know what I'm saying? I get to do that in a place that I always wanted to be at. Like, you can't beat that. My mother would be so so happy right now. Yeah, my mother is so happy now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a blessing. That's not, it's such a big stage. And you know what I'm saying? I, I, I always admired uh, Danny and looked up to Danny because of the, with the, whole, the whole cancer thing and him coming back from cancer. I lost my mother to cancer. So that's, a, that's another amazing thing to me is to, is to be on the undercard but with him. You know what I'm saying? When everything I do yes. is for my mother and, and he beat that, you know? I, I think it's just a beautiful thing. The whole, the whole scenario for me is, is great. And uh, I actually don't mind being in New York because of that. But I, I, I know the I know the, the odds are all stacked against me again. But, you know, hopefully we'll get everything everything neutral how it should be. That's fair, right? Yes, I agree. Because, like you I'm know, both of y'all. I'm crazy or, or out of the way. I'm just asking to be treated fairly when it wasn't supposed to be there again anyway, you know. But, but it's a beautiful opportunity, and I'm not going to turn that down. And, and but just like the first time, it's for the sake of women's boxing. Now, now, you both bring a, a huge following, a huge crowd, fan support. Everybody loves both of y'all, yeah. you know. I'm, assu- I'm, a, I'm assuming that everybody's going to come down and support you as well again. Oh, yeah. I already got my, my, my both of my phones. I'm blowing up like, where's my phone? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know it. But, yeah, no, nah, they're going to come down and probably pull up a lot of buses and, and vans and everything again. Like, every everybody was waiting for it. Why wouldn't they? Is, is New England going to be in the building? I got people from Virginia coming yep. down, everything. Yeah, because you, you, you definitely have trained the VA. And, and are you – where is your – well, I don't need to know where your training camp is taking place because that's – you know, you, you deal with that. The question yeah. I want to ask you is um, what do you expect to take place on fight night outside of just winning the fight and, and taking hold the belt? What what am I – I didn't hear you. What is What am I expecting? I said what do you – what do you expect to take place on fight that outside of, you know, being victorious? Yeah, I, all I expect from that night is fireworks from the morning we wake up to the to the minute it's over. Yeah, you know, I don't really I don't really know what to expect, but and I'm not even worried about that. I'm just worried about it going in there doing my job. That's that's all I care about. I'm gonna have my hands all over Heather more than I had them on any other woman. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm going to touch her like she's mine. I'm going to touch her like she's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Pat, you got a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like she's uh, definitely ready for this fight. Let me ask you a question real quick. What's the yep. date this is taking place? October 27th. October 27th. So you definitely have a lot more time to prepare than the first fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when they said that, oh, we're going to have a major announcement and everything after the last fight, I kind of assumed, and my fingers just crossed, that that's what it was going to be, you know? But then uh, I know all my, all my fans is like, well, are you trying to trick us to get us in the building or something? Like, nothing was announced. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah, no, nah, man. I've been waiting for this day for too long, and I'm going to put in – way more extra work than I did last time. And, you know, I have time this time. That's the beautiful thing. I have time. I can do everything right. I can have the right farm, and I can go wherever I need to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm focused. My head's in a good place right now, you know? But last time it wasn't. I had a lot of stuff going on. So now, this fight is for the WBO. This, this fight is for the WBO. <laughs> well, wait, the w, I'm sorry, Pat. This fight is for the stop. WBO. I, I can't help it. This fight is for the, the WBO. I was, I was just I was reaching real quick. <laughs> this fight is for the WBO featherweight championship. You know, um, will this fight be shown on TV or HBO? Do you know? Because it, w- it would be great if you know to put both of y'all on HBO. It should be, and you know what I'm saying? I, th- I think that we would get crazy views, I mean, just for the simple fact of the first one. I'm not sure about that, so I'm not going to answer anything or even say anything. Cause I'm not sure. I'm just, I just know that it's going down and, and all that right now. Um, you know, so we'll just wait to see what HBO and, 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 and Lou says, you know. Hopefully I'm crossing my fingers. Like, everybody should be able to see it. And, it, 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 I mean, it's, it's a simple math. We're going to draw a mad views. 
So you're looking at a trilogy? I'm looking at this time. Oh. Oh, of course it's going to be I'm sorry, Pat. I'm not leaving with <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I, I'm, I'm so amped right now. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so amped right now for both, both, both fighters. I'm so amped for Shelly. I'm so amped for Heather. I'm just so amped for women's boxing right now. Pardon me, Pat. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're good. We uh, we just really suck at timing. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, uh, we're really bad about that but um you know like so we, we've we've had let's see what three four boxers on this podcast so far and um i cover personally mma for brooklyn fights um that's kind of my my niche but i've kind of noticed a trend to where like you know most boxers like training camps are much shorter than uh mma fighters uh yeah, to me though this kind of this kind of how long they being kept for uh, you know, typically it could be you know two to three months. Um, Man, that's crazy. I feel like, I feel like you would burn out. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. Um, I guess they you know they have more disciplines to cover though. But um, this does seem like a long camp, in my opinion, for a for a boxing match. From my knowledge, are you taking this training camp kind of like at a slow and steady pace, or are you just kind of hopping right into your training? I mean, I've been I've been staying like on top of things, but I haven't been going super hard. No. Um, yeah, okay. I've been lifting my weights, but I've been lifting my weights light because i got a whole gym in my basement. Um, I've been hitting the bags, but, you know, light, and I haven't been sparring. I'm going to spar tomorrow. I sparred once. I'm not, I'm, I, my bad. I sparred once, but, no, I haven't really been – I haven't been going hard, but I, I'm, I'm going to start that probably eight weeks out, maybe even six. Okay. You know? But, uh, yeah, because I feel like when sometimes if you give too much, you burn out. I need to peak at the right time, and I can't, I can't go hard right now. Well, I shouldn't be going hard right now, but I'm 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 stepping it up now. I'm not so honey. Yep. Yeah, I was just curious about that because it did seem like you know kind of a long time before that fight, and it seems like a bit of an early announcement. So I was kind of curious how you would approach training camp. And also, real quick, you've had uh, what five fights after the Hardy fight? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think she's competed in three. Do you think the transition to MMA? Uh, do you think that's going to affect her ability in the ring? Do you think it's going to take away from it a bit, or do you think she's just going to be, um, you know, of course, the best version of herself? Um, I know she's going to, you know, take her training real serious. She's a hard worker and everything. So I know that she's going to come in there in shape and, and ready to go. The the toll that the MMA has taken on her body, I'm not sure, you know. Um, because I've never done it before, I don't know, so I can't really speak on it. But you would think that it, it abused her body a little bit. Um, I mean, yeah, but I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, all, all, all I know is that I'm preparing for her to come in at the top shape of her life, the best shape of her life. Um, you know, and then that's the same way I'm gonna come in. We both got time, and and I don't know if she's been even doing the MMA. So if not, she probably had a break all that time. You know, so I don't know what yeah. to expect from that. But I know that MMA takes a toll on your body. Top to bottom. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, I think she's, I mean, she's had, you know, her ups and downs, obviously, in her, her short span in MMA. Um, yeah. You know, start for that, that that loss in her career. It was kind of a little bit of a setback. But, again, you know, she came back as well. So, yeah, it's tough. I, when, she, when she was on, she explained to us how she does her training for both sports, kind of just, you know, flips the switch to whatever her fight is set, whether it's a boxing match or a mixed martial arts fight. So I was just curious what you thought about, you know, how she breaks it up, if that's good or bad for her boxing. I mean, it's, it's different. Though. I mean, you would think that it would be bad for the boxing, but like I said, I never did it, so I don't know because I know that in karate and, and kickboxing, and everything, you put your weight on the front leg. and boxing, your weight needs to be more on the back leg so that your head's not in the strike zone. So, I mean, Yeah, I, and she I, talked about that as well. She, she talked about, you know, distance and everything is kind of different as well because – there's a lot more strikes that can come at you and take down right. attempts. And so you have come to have, you know, exactly. And it's a cage, you know, rather than a ring. If it, if it, if ultimately, I would think that the boxing, her, be, her being in boxing and training for a boxing is going to be like a break for her because, you know, the, the training has to be not, 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 it has to be easier because you don't have to do so much. You know what I'm saying? And now she doesn't have to worry about kicks coming at her. She doesn't have to worry about elbows being thrown at her and stuff. You know, so, so you would think that way mentally it, 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 it would be easier and she's probably, like, relieved, you know? The training has to be a little bit different. She doesn't have to focus on so many things anymore. 
my opinion. But like I said, I don't know. <laughs> you just you just ready to get in there and just just fight. You just ready to go in there and get that belt. You ready to whip ass? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm going to give it my all, you know what I'm saying? That's four days before Gigi's birthday, so that would be a great birthday present for her and then take her out after and stuff after and get her whatever she wants. But, uh, you know, it's just I, I want to win it for my mother. I want to win it for my family. I want to win it for my city, I, I, you know, just everything. Like, there's so much at stake. It's like, how could I not work harder? And, and, and I'm just, I refuse to leave without the belt. That's it. Would it be fair to say that this is the biggest fight in your career ever? I mean, yeah, for, for the for the for the simple fact that that's the only person I lost to, per se. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I want I, I want to make that right and sh- and show the people like this was really what's up. But yeah, I, it would have to be. Nice, nice. For me, for me, well, I, I, in my heart, in my mental, it's the biggest fight because. Of that of the situation from the first fight, and like I said, I, I would I would have understood if it was a draw. I was you saw my my expression, my face, and everything. I was completely blown away. Like, are you yeah. serious? Yeah. No way was that was that. No way was the scores what they said. Absolutely not. And and really, if you I couldn't even believe the percentages because I would throw three or four shots and then she counter with like a, a jab right hand or an uppercut. You know what I'm saying? Or a hook. But I was going. I didn't get no credit for the body shots that I landed. I didn't get. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I was throwing shot like a few shots, and then it just be like a little. Pot, and then the sweat coming off my. I'm fucking hydrated. I drink two gallons of water. There should be some water coming out of my body. You know. But I, I just don't see how the scores were like that at all. But you know, I'm, I'm not going to bad talk anybody or, or, or no judges or anything. They saw what they saw, and I just got to accept that and move on. I can't even worry about that right now. Okay. Pat, okay. any questions? Uh, no, I think that about does it for, for my end. All right. Shelly, uh, we appreciate you calling in. You definitely don't, you know, lock in, chop it up again before the fight happens. And we appreciate you calling in. And I'll I appreciate speak to you y'all soon. having me. All right, my yeah, good, good talking I'm to you. I'm going to bring you your hat. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk about Nate Diaz taking on Dustin Poirier at UC 230. Um, you know, in my opinion, I don't know why the UFC brass did not put this with McGregor and Nurmagomedov at UFC 229. Um, it just seems like such a missed opportunity because if McGregor wins and Diaz wins, I mean, you can line that up so perfectly. I don't know why they put those on separate cars. I don't know if it's a contract issue, money issue, timing issue, what have you. But to me personally, it just seems like like a really bad move. Um, I just don't know why that happened. I'm sure there's a reason behind it because, I mean, it's so obvious that everyone recognizes it that the UFC obviously has to consider that. But for the fight itself, um, you know, I'm not for sure where Nate Diaz is at in his career. Um, yes, the first win over McGregor was impressive. His second fight was also impressive with McGregor. Other than that, he's kind of been up and down throughout his career. Um, and he has not fought since UC 202, which took place in 2016. Um, and I think it's been over two years now that he's been out. So it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes back. Um, you know, I don't know if a break like that was good or bad for him, to be honest. But, uh, again, like I said, we'll find out when he faces Dustin Poirier at UFC 230. Um, Dustin Poirier is coming off a win over Eddie Alvarez. It's very impressive. He's, I mean, he's definitely in the prime of his career right now. Uh, Dustin Poirier has been on an absolute tear throughout the lightweight division, which is not an easy division to do so in. So I expect the best version of Dustin Poirier. The thing is, though, I think Nate Diaz, where he – where he can win this fight is using his range a little bit better. And, you know, Poirier has been knocked out uh, by McGregor as well. So I think if Diaz is able to use his range a little bit more efficiently than he has in the past, he's able to stay on the outside, kind of like how he did with Michael Johnson. Um, I think he can be very successful against 
Dustin Poirier, because, you know, he's not really a wrestler per se. He is very good on the ground. Both men are very good on the ground um, in terms of the jiu-jitsu. So if the fight does go to the ground, that would be very interesting to see what happens on the mat. In my opinion, that would be uh, great as well. But in the stand-up, they're, they're pretty much similar. I think the only difference is Dustin Poirier throws a lot more kicks uh, than Nate Diaz does. But overall, um, early prediction for that fight, uh, I think Dustin Poirier is gonna, would, would win um, just because, you oh. know, I think he can, he can counter well. Um, uh, you know, I just, I think, I don't want to say overrated because that's not the right term for it, but I think Diaz may have been hyped up a little bit too much, in my opinion, during this McGregor uh, fiesta. Um, and I just don't think he's going to, I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, he hasn't been active. Dustin Poirier has, and he's been on an absolute streak. So, I mean, his confidence has to be through the roof. Um, and he knows if he gets this win, he probably, like, most definitely gets the next title shot at the lightweight division. So, and that can mean a fight with Conor McGregor, a rematch. So, that's a big payday. What do you think about that fight? So, so well, I would like to ask you this. So, you, you think that Diaz is going to lose? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Emphatically, yes. <laughs> that, that, that's, wow, I'm, I'm just surprised at, at, at the response. I'm surprised that you're, I'm, I'm really surprised, you know, after I mean, that, it's, listening it's, to your... It, this is to your assessment and analyzation. I definitely understand where you're coming from, and I respect where you're coming from. But you don't need it for badass. <laughs> you know? And, and you're and, right. And, 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 and he's a very good boxer yeah. as well. And I'm not surprised, mother, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. He he just has – they always – Nate is always sold to prove to prove to others that he has the will and the skill set to, to to defeat fighters who others believe are able to defeat him. He's he he comes from a different how you say to me Nate Diaz comes from a different platform. He comes from a different fighting style, he comes from a different aura, he comes from a different world. You know, he comes into the fight and Everything that you just presented, he's a whole different person with once he's inside the octagon. I just believe that maybe he has myself personally will make sure it will become victorious come fight night. He will either wrap him up, knock him out, or just, you know, defeat the guy hands down like he does with his hands down <laughs> and just, you know, you know, dominate his opponent. I don't I don't see this guy coming into the ring Age-wise, I don't see this guy coming into the ring doing anything different that Nate has, hasn't seen before. Nate Diaz is very tough, and he's only been finished one time in his career against um, Thompson. I forgot his first name, but he got finished one time in his career. He's very tough. He took McGregor's best punch and kept coming forward. Um, I, but then again, you know, you got to bring that up as well. He took a lot of damage in that second McGregor fight. A lot of damage was dropped several times early on. Um, and you got to kind of wonder, I mean, he is 33. You know, it's decently young. But like I said, and he hasn't made this cut to 155 since his Michael Johnson fight. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot of it factors for me to say Nate Diaz is going to go in there and get a win when I've been seeing Dustin Poirier perform at very high levels while Nate Diaz has been absent. Um, and the reason he did explain that he's been absent, he's in a lawsuit. So uh, that obviously kind of sheds some light into why Nate Diaz and hasn't returned since McGregor. Uh, but like I said, man, he has 11 losses to his name. Um, you know. Yeah. And, and, and the win over McGregor was as beautiful as it was. Um, kind of kind of obviously put him in a spotlight to where if you know he would have got that win over anybody else, uh, I mean, even a champion, it, he wouldn't be in the same position that he is now. Um, yeah, August 20th, 2016 was his last fight against McGregor. Um, so we're coming up on exactly two years away from the octagon. But, you know, like I said, uh, I'm sure his boxing will be as crisp as ever, and he will definitely put up a great That's fight against true. Dustin Poirier. So. Nonetheless, it'll be a great fight to to watch. So definitely, two thirty has a great fight there. 
Um, real quick, though, I do want to touch on UFC Fight Night 135, I believe. Uh, we'll cover it more in-depth next week. Uh, but I want to touch on the main event, which is Jane, uh, excuse me, Justin Gaethje versus James Vick. Um, this is a lightweight bout. Justin Gaethje is one bad dude. Um, he just he fights. That's that's the best way you can really put it. He comes forward, throws hands, leg kicks, tries to take you down, just absolutely maul you. You can hit him, hit him, hit him. He will still keep coming forward. He was 18 and 0. Excuse me, 17 and 0 coming to the UFC. Defeated Michael Johnson by TKO. Um, and he's on a two-fight losing streak uh, to Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier. And he was TKO in both those fights. Took a lot of damage. But that's just his fighting style. Um, and he's taking on James Vick. And I, I think Justin Gaethje is a really high-level fighter in terms of just his, his grit and toughness. But, you know, as impressive as he's been throughout his career, the fight against... Michael Johnson, it doesn't put him as far up in the lightweight division as I think he would be because, you know, Michael Johnson has kind of had to been on a slope. Uh, once his featherweight hasn't been too successful there so far. Um, but, again, you know, he's a tough guy. So taking on James Vick, who's 13-1, and one, who's an up-and-coming lightweight. Um, a lot of people are saying he's underrated, and I think that's true. You know, he's a tall and lanky guy. Uh, 6'3 for a lightweight, which is insane. Um, again, like I said, though, I think he's in the same boat as Gaethje for me right now. I don't know exactly where James Vick's skill, James Vick's skill set is in terms of being a top lightweight in the UFC. So I think that fight, um, if James Vick's get the win, I, I don't think it's going to catapult him as much as people think because Gaethje's on a two-fight losing streak. To me, honestly, I think this fight will solidify one guy probably near the top five in my opinion, um, in the lightweight division, but uh, it doesn't grant, like, a title shot or anything. Certainly not. Uh, but it, it'll just be a comforting win, I think, for either man in their career. More side of uh, Justin Gaethje and then the catapult, catapult James Vick a little bit more if he gets a win. But, yeah, that's what I wanted to touch on on UFC Fight Night 135. Uh, but I do want to talk about something in boxing. Um, coming back at you with the heavyweights. Uh, so Tyson Fury uh, has been kind of making his smirks at Deontay Wilder on social media. Um, let me yeah, see I'm if not, I can... I'm not, really, yeah, I'm not really impressed by him, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is really impressive. Uh, um, you know, so Deontay posted, this is the exact words, uh, hashtag forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing the harm done to you or making up with the person who has caused the harm. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that helps you go on with life. Forgive me that all I may have caused harm to. May God have mercy on my soul. Um, and then Dustin Fury responds saying, shut up, you pussy. Uh, yeah, at a certain point, it just, it's like, is that too far? Um, like, you know, what exactly is the point of saying that kind of stuff? But it's a fight game, so I guess it's it's a, it's a little bit ruthless. Um, and obviously, you know, I think, I, obviously, I think he's doing this for attention, um, trying to spark up the fight. Um, obviously, you know he he wants to build this fight up, try to get this going after his uh, after his fight. You know, hopefully, he goes according to plan and gets the win. And you know, if these two can go back and forth, I wouldn't mind to see this fight. I think Tyson Fury is a talented boxer. Um, but you know, I really don't want it to hold up the the, the Anthony uh, Anthony Joshua fight per se if that does come to fruition at some point. So, but what do you what do you make of this mess between Wilder and Fury? I don't, I don't make anything of it. I wipe my ass with it. You know, <laughs> like you said, what do you make the mess? I wipe my ass with it. I think it's a I think it's a a corny a corny fight. It's a fight that needs to happen. But it's not a fight that must happen, you know, because there are fights that need that need to take place before this fight takes place. In my opinion, you have you have you have Tyson Fury, who is going through whatever he's going through, and I, I applaud him, I salute him, with everything that he's dealt with regarding his depression and mental health issues, um, coming back to the sport, being being at the top of the 
top of the sport. I mean, it takes a lot out of a man to to fight in itself inside the square circle, inside the ring. And for him to come back and fight at the top of the top, it takes a lot off the My feeling is I just don't think he's ready to be that man again. He's defeated Klitschko. That's what is the defining factor in regards to my opinion as, as, as it relates to his career. He defeated Klitschko. Klitschko was Vladimir, I'm talking about. Vladimir Klitschko was dominating the sport for I don't know how long, for years. And Tyson Fury just came through, out muscled him, out hustled him, out worked him, and defeated him. After that, he went to a depression mode. He went to whatever he went to. Now he's coming out of it. He's getting his, you know, getting his work rate up. He's he's had one fight. He's getting ready to have another fight. And then he's looking to take on one of the best, one of the top heavyweights, one of the best champions in the world, in Deontay Wilder, if he's successful with his next fight. I just don't think right now Tyson Fury should be focused on fighting Deontay Wilder. I think Tyson Fury should be focused on getting his career back together, build it up to where he needs to build it, and not definitely take on Deontay Wilder after, after coming back from your recovery for a second or third fight in Deontay Wilder. I don't think that's the right fight for him. But who am I to say so? You know, yeah, I'm just a guy I think... I just love boxing. <laughs> yeah. And I think that it's, it really comes down to how much fan involvement is this hype going to get? I think if enough people start paying attention to the Wilder Fury story, uh, that they'll jump at that timeline, and I think the fight will happen because boxing is all about money. So I think if I gain... The, if Wilder, I, Fury yeah. time, the, the Wilder Fury timeline has already been jumping. Everybody is already open to it. Everybody is already talking about it. It's all over the world. The problem is, is it really going to happen? That's what people don't understand. That's what people are not really looking at. It's like, okay, it's, it's a lot of talk. It's a lot of talk. They say, they say contracts are signed, but at the end of the day, Fury has an opponent in front of him. So therefore, are you overlooking the opponent that you have in front of you to fight Wilder for that huge, big, mega payday? And, and, and the fight is supposed to be taking place in Las Vegas? I mean, to be, to be honest, I, I feel like no matter how he does it, I feel like if Tyson, pull, if Fury pulls off the win, I feel like no matter how, I feel like he'll be in a position to have that Wilder fight just because of the publicity. I mean, if, <laughs> if you can make McGregor and Floyd Mayweather be in a boxing ring together, it certainly can make this fight. It, I think the only problem is, Oh, I um, that. It's, 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 a <laughs> it's a conflicting schedule in terms of heavyweights because there are other fights that Deontay Wilder um, should take. Um, like I said, I, I agree with you on the fact that I don't think this fight should happen now. I feel like Fury kind of doesn't need to necessarily build himself back up, but I feel like he needs bigger names in his career. You know what I mean? Um, Wilder just came off a fight with, was it Ortiz, right? Yes. Oh, this is his last fight. Yes, I mean that's a huge name, right, in the heavyweight division. So I, I feel like Wilder's at the top of the boxing chain, you know, and Fury was as well. But I feel like he's kind of, you know, in the middle top part. I, I feel like he's not quite there in terms of um, resume right now uh, to, to fight Wilder. Uh, he is undefeated, correct? Fury is. Yes, he is. As well yes, as Wilder. Is. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's, what, 39, no, 38 KOs. But I, I just think that, like I said, the, the hiatus and everything like that, it, it just doesn't make too much sense right now. I feel like the Anthony Joshua fight may be his next fight, but I don't know how that, you know, how the timing is going to plan out for that. Because does, does Anthony Joshua have a mandatory defense lined up or no? Yes, he's getting ready to fight Alexander Pozeka, uh next month for September. The, the okay. date actually eludes me right now. Yeah, that fight is definitely taking place. And okay. after that fight, he's scheduled to fight in April. I'm assuming against the winner of Keontae Wilder and Tyson Fury. But it's like, okay, well, how can you fight the winner of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury when Tyson Fury's getting ready to fight Saturday? 
you gotta, it's going to take some time for them to, you know, put together something. And then you if expect they put the fight. Then you if expect they put the fight in December. The fight. Yeah. If, if Tyson Fury wins on Saturday, he's supposed to fight Deontay Wilder in December. And then, okay, cool. You going to fight in August? I mean, in April against Anthony Joshua? Great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the setup for everybody to fail. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tr- tricky path. You know, crazier things have happened in boxing in terms of matchups. You know, certain random names get thrown out. Um, well, it's a I big roll. Well, it's a big roll. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's going on this weekend in boxing? Anything uh, anything popping around that area? Absolutely. Uh, Saturday, we are at live for Atlantic City, top rank. They have a stacked fight card. They have Jesse Hart, Brian Jennings, Shakira Stevens, um, just Joseph Adorno, Christian Pardo, Thomas Lamada. Oh, yeah. It, it's going to be a great fight card on Atlantic City. A lot of fighters, a lot of up-and-coming uh, contenders, top, top rank has a great stable of fighters. I mean, they have a great stable of fighters, and they are they are being managed well. They are they are being managed very very well, and they are being positioned for up and coming title fights. I mean, Brian Jennings himself, he's a heavyweight title contender. He fought Cusco, went twelve rounds with Cusco, Madison Square a few years ago, and fought Luis Ortiz and got you know. Dusty, he suffered a knockout loss, TKO loss to Luis Ortiz two years ago. But he is still a valid heavyweight title contender. And you got Jesse Hart, who's a super, who's a super middleweight NABF or NABA national champion, who's also in line to fight for a world championship title against some of the top super middleweight champions right now, David Benavidez and and um, Gilberto Ramirez and, and um, George St. Rose was getting ready to fight Caleb um, Smith in the um, WBC or w, excuse me WBS Super Series to fight all that. So you got Top Rank is really doing their thing, and they're also bringing back not only Top Rank but Atlantic City boxing is really coming back to the forefront. You know, at one point in time in boxing, everybody went to Atlantic City. Everybody drove took a bus, and went to Atlantic City to catch the fights. Some of the greatest fights ever took place. Some of the greatest fighters ever fought in Atlantic City. And I, I don't even need to name names, but I can't, but I don't, need to, I don't need to name them because it's getting ready to happen again once again this coming weekend. I would like to pose the question to you. What do you like to see what's going to take place in the near future? I mean, tomorrow we got PFL six. Oh, good, good stuff there. You got the return of uh, Ray Cooper the third, who, of course, if you remember in his last fight, TKO'd Jake uh, Jake Shields. Jake Shields. Yeah. yeah, in the second round. So yes. we, it'll be exciting to see. To be honest, um, including myself, I think a lot of people underestimated what Ray Cooper could do. Um. So I'm excited to see if he's going to be able to actually um, continue on this winning streak of his. Uh, because, you know, like I said, I, I really underrated rated him, and then he goes in there and just blasts Jake Shields. So I was like, what? <laughs> kind of sent me back. And then Jake Shields is also on the card. Um, I'd have to take a look at oh, the rankings. Sure but yeah, he's fighting as well. He's taking on, um, I believe, his name is Herman Tornado. Uh, and I believe Jake Shields can still get in, possibly maybe with like a first round finish or something like that. Like we saw the Chris Wade earlier um, a couple weeks ago when he got in with his six point uh, victory. Um, so you know, I think it is possible in the World Trade Division for Jake Shields to get, sneak in there with a win. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. I think yeah, John Howard is fighting at 185 against Bruno Santos. That's a good fight. Eddie Gordon. Also makes his return in the PFL. My guy Chuck. Um, all, That's my guy Chuck. Yes, he's he's also looking to rebound after a decision loss, um, and possibly get a six point victory. Um, I'm not sure how much he needs, but to clinch that spot to make the middleweight playoffs, he's taking on Gasan Yumalotov. Man, he fights some guys with some names. Let me tell you what. 
I forgot the name of his last opponent, but he had a crazy name too. But uh, yeah, Eddie Gordon's oh, yeah. return should be. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go on. Oh, you are. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, Eddie Gordon. Um, I think in his last fight, he was doing very well. Um, you know, I think he just got a little tired, to be honest, and it looked like he didn't know exactly when he should sit off his shots. Uh, you know, just looking like an off night for Gordon. So I'm excited to see what he can do because I know he's one powerful individual. So. All right, well, guys, we will be back next week around the same time. Wednesday, we will shoot the episode again. Do not know if we will have a guest next week or not. It may be a traditional episode, but if we do, you will certainly we, we, listen we, we, we to don't have a guest. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to have a guest. But, yeah, because we, we are the guests. We are the host and the guest. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're always a good time. So regardless if we That's have another weird. third a third person, you better tune in. But uh, real quick, right. you know, I'm doing the outro this time. I, I feel privileged here, X. Um, where can they find you at on social media? Of course, they can find me anywhere they feel like looking on to. <laughs> Just click the button. Xavier Porter 227, Brooklyn Fights 1, shoot the 5, they can find you. It's Pat 8, right? Oh, Pat yeah. 8, LAX? LAX, baby. Here we go. <laughs> All right, guys, that does it for this episode. Hey, thanks for, hey, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you, Pat. Appreciate Shelly calling in. And we're going to bring so much more. Stay tuned. Stay locked in. Keep it fine.